Hi there friends. I am back here to talk to you about the Book of Ruth in our series on the Book of Ruth. And you can find this entire booklet. It's a free ebook on my website www.jadelee.org. www.jadelee.org. We're going to go through chapter 2 of the Book of Ruth today. And I want to encourage you that if you're at a point in your life where you believe that you're in a hard place and you're wondering what's going on, continue to watch this video. And even if you're at a great place and you just want to find a higher sense of purpose and see God position you exactly where you need to be in your life, then this video will help you do that. Let's go ahead and pray together with one another and then we're going to dig into some insight from God's Word as we continue through the Book of Ruth. Every month, every month, I'm going to post a new video on another chapter in the Book of Ruth and then we'll go through the remainder of my ebooks. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity for every woman that is watching this video to get closer to you, to understand your Word in a deeper way to understand the truths of the Bible and help them to grow in you, to understand their life more and to get to a place of strength and maturity and of grace and of your love that we really go deeper into your love and that love will emanate in every part of our life from our relationship with our husband, with our friendships, with our co-workers and every other person in our life that your love will be stronger than any other voice, a condemnation of guilt, of discouragement, of pain that we may be going through or that may be coming from other people in our life. So I just pray for encouragement and I thank you that today as we study your word together as women, we will draw closer to you and we will grow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So awesome, so awesome to be with you all again. It is already October. Can you believe that? The year 2016 is almost over. And if you're watching this later, it really doesn't matter when you're watching it because I believe that God's word works in our lives at any time. So it's not a coincidence that you're watching this video. I want to start off by reading something that I wrote recently and put onto Facebook and I really see how it ties into what we're going to talk about today. And um, it was called a morning meditation when I wrote it. It says, sometimes it could feel like because the job we wanted didn't come through, it has taken so long for the man of our dreams to arrive. Our kids aren't living for God, are we? are struggling in the major we thought God called us to, that maybe we missed God, or maybe God is judging us. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes in the midst of the bad news is a new way for God to express how much he believes in us, how much he has chosen us for the hard times too, and how much he knows we can do it even when we feel like we are at our end. Don't give up. You are stronger than you think. I'm going to re repeat one phrase here. Sometimes in the midst of the bad news is a new way for God to express how much he believes in us, how much he has chosen us for the hard times too, and how much he knows we can do it even when we feel like we are at our end. Don't give up. You are stronger than you think. And when we think about a woman that had all the right to give up, that was in a really difficult situation, that was in a lot of pain, that was coming out of a time of loss, losing her husband, Ruth is one of those women that we can identify with even though she lived thousands of years before her. Her circumstances are very similar to ours. She did not live the perfect dream life where everything went well. She was a normal girl growing up in a nation that wasn't her own and she fell into some really difficult, hard circumstances, which you can read about in the first chapter of Ruth, and you can watch the videos that I already did on her story. Now, I want you to journey with me a little bit here through this book, and as we talk about it, I also want to talk a little bit about my life and your life and what you may be going through right now. I want to ask you a question to think about as we read through some of the verses in 
this chapter. Do you believe you are where you are supposed to be? Because God placed you there even when it doesn't make sense. Here's Ruth coming out of her own people, moving to a new nation, coming from Moab, going to a new city, a new town, a new place with her mother-in-law. And she's all alone. She doesn't know anyone there. She doesn't have any family there outside of Naomi. And she really would have been seen as an outcast coming to that place. It was just all fresh and new. And she was sent there for a reason that wasn't even positive or good. It was because she just lost her husband and her mother was grie her mother-in-law was grieving both her sons, both of her sons, and of course one of them was Ruth's husband. And so there we all come to that place sometimes where we're just at a new new territory, a new situation in life. And maybe you're finding some new things in your life that you would love to say, man, these new things are all positive. But with change usually comes some other areas of growth in our own life or of challenge or a responsibility that we have to press through. And so I want to tell you, this year, 2016, at the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to my husband and I and said, this is going to be a year of new beginnings, but not only new beginnings, like the number eight new things, is a fresh start, but it's going to be double new beginnings. And we were like, yes, this is so exciting. God's going to give us double. We're going to see all these new amazing things happen. But it's kind of like... If you've ever been in a labor and delivery room, when that woman is pushing that baby out, we're all excited about that baby coming. But the only one in there that's in pain to the degree that, um, to the highest degree is that mom. And she's excited too, but at the moment, it's a push. You know, it is a press sometimes to get that baby out. And I just happen to know that because I've worked with a few moms that have had to go through that process and been there coaching and helping and encouraging them. And that is a strenuous process emotionally, physically, mentally. Well, our life is kind of similar, as hard as it may be to think about something like that. When we have new beginnings and God and births new things in our life, we can expect also that we're going to be a little bit stretched. Stretching isn't a bad thing, but it may be place us out of our comfort zone. So this year, we found that we really saw some new beginnings. And I'm going to tell you, all these things are transitions we all go through. The only thing is that we happen to go through them all in a matter of months, like in nine months. It's the month October now. All of this has happened to us from January to September right we had new jobs in our family a new home a new we moved to a new location and then we uprooted and moved our whole church to a new church location physically where we we worship together we got some new ministries that we are now leading we have new friends these are all good things they are they equal the blessing of god responsibility opportunity and stretching for blessing but they also have got us out of our comfort zone they have also come with challenge, new challenges and new struggles and new questions that we're asking the lord and at times if we're not careful they can also look like they're not a blessing like they're it's like maybe i did something wrong and cause us to doubt or question ourselves or question if god's really in our choices so I want to encourage you that if you feel that way when the Lord just comes in and blows on your whole life and things start moving around and shifting, that sometimes that is God positioning you for a blessing, even though it can feel like at the time that it's just the, you're, maybe you did something wrong. Like I said in that Facebook quote at the beginning, not always the case. Sometimes God chooses us for difficulty. He calls us into challenge. He calls us into a place that only God can orchestrate and only God can bring us through and only God can provide through for you know there's a popular quote out there that 
if what you're believing for seems possible in your heart and mind, then that could be insulting to God because you're not believing for something that's big enough. It may be that your faith is not where it could be and that the Lord wants to stretch your capacity for what you're believing him for in this season. And that is okay. It requires faith when we find ourselves in those places. So we're in new territory, many of us. And when we look at Ruth chapter 2, verse 2, we see what I would call the Ruth 2-2 principle. The Ruth 2-2 principle. Let's look at Ruth's heart positioning, her mindset, her attitude in this place of a new beginning. In Ruth 2-2, and if you have your Bible and you want to pause, you can to get there. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. It says, Ruth the Moabites, Midas, Ask Naomi, will you let me go into the fields and gather fallen grain behind someone who allows me to? Will you let me go ahead into the fields and gather fallen grain behind someone who allows me to? This is the Ruth 2-2 principle. Ruth asks, will you let me go? Will you let me go? It reminds me of when God spoke to Isaiah and he said, Whom shall I send? Whom shall go for us? Whom shall go for us? And then Isaiah says, Here am I, Lord, send me. Ruth asked. She said, Look, can will you let me go? In that word, let me, is the sense of will you allow me, right? And we see a lot come out of Ruth's heart from that word choice. It's a heart of excitement. She has a heart of opportunity, a heart of willingness, a heart of readiness, a heart of honor, a heart of hard work ethics, a heart of humility. All of that is seen in this word, will you allow me? It's like, will you give me the opportunity to do this? Will you give me the honor of doing this, of going out in this field and working to provide for our family? I want to work. I'm seeing this as a blessing that I get to work. I get to do this. And it's such a place of humility that she's walking in, of putting herself second so her mother-in-law didn't have to do the job, but she would do it instead. So she's at this place where she had all the right to complain, to get frustrated, to want to give up, to want to quit, to say, God, you failed me. God, you didn't come through. Why did you take my husband to ask all those questions? But instead, here we see Ruth with an excellent heart, an excellent mindset saying, look, I want to serve in any way I can and I'm willing and I'm ready and in spite of the pain I'm going to keep going so that's the Ruth 2-2 principle and we can all ask ourselves when we find ourselves in a new place that's unfamiliar and where we may want to just quit or give up am I saying will you let me will you allow me is that my mindset right now are those the type of questions that I'm asking in this season of difficulty the next thing is that Ruth steps out by faith again and she finds herself um, in a place where she's gleaning, doing something called gleaning. And we used to have in our church this thing called the gleaning program. Church, this thing called the gleaning program. And it was this opportunity to glean spiritually from other people. You know, it's just a spiritual term that means to gather and to pick up leftovers, whatever you can find leftover, to gather and to pick it up and to use it for your needs, to provide your needs. So Ruth wants to glean, and she's in this farming world in ancient Israel where financially those that were needy could pick up the leftovers in the field of these harvesters while they're farming. So in today's world, we have these machines that do this work, but during Ruth's lifetime, this was manually done by cutting the grain and then they would carry, pick it up and gather it and carry it away. This was God's own welfare system. And so if the farmers missed something during the harvest, they would literally leave a whole section of the field for poor, those that were poor and needy to come and take that home to provide for their family's needs. This is what Ruth would have been doing. And this would have been happening during the month of April, which was the month of Passover. If you understand Passover, that's during this time of the year where previously in the book of Exodus, God goes and he delivers the Jews 
from chattel slavery, just like African Americans went through in America, and he brings them out of slavery uh, through this event that is known as the Passover. It's this term to celebrate their emancipation. It's when God sends an angel, and the angel comes is a death angel that's going to annihilate the firstborn of the Egyptians, but that angel passed over the doors of the house of all the people of God because they put the lamb's blood, they would have lambs in their house and put the blood over their doorposts. Now, all that might sound strange and eerie, but it was really symbolic of Jesus Christ coming, dying for us, and us getting a pass out of eternal death and being able to walk into relationship with God and go to heaven forever in intimacy with him. Now, all this is strategically happening by God in Ruth's life at the same time. All of a sudden, this provision is coming out of nowhere where it looked like they had nothing. Life is coming where there was previously death. And every year during this Passover, something called the barley harvest would happen and it would be reaped. So this is the timing of the year that Ruth is blessed to come in to Bethlehem at that time. You know what else? Bethlehem was the same exact location that later on, Jesus Christ would be born and come in to save the world. So you see a lot of symbolism that points towards Christ through these scriptures. This was God's unforeseen plan in Ruth and Naomi's life. It was God's divine positioning and his divine uh, provision. So you see that in Ruth chapter 2 verse 3, which I'm not going to read right now, but you can read on your own. And if you're following along, I'm on page 21 of our booklet. Now let's look at the favor of God in Ruth's life, the favor of God in her life. And we're going to turn the page to page 22 if you're following. Um, God provides for Naomi. He provides for Ruth. And of course, later on, he would provide in a way that the entire world would be blessed through Naomi and Ruth, which we're going to see as we keep going through this lesson. You know, God was speaking to them that if you would just be positioned where I have you, just stay faithful there and just keep your relationship with me, then I'm going to protect you and I'm never going to leave you and I'm going to provide a way out of no way. And it's the same thing for us. So many of us are just living for the Lord, loving the Lord, doing the best we can where we are. And God doesn't provide for us just because we're doing things. He provides for us because he loves us and because we're his children. But he also rewards us for our faithfulness. And that's what we're seeing happen in her life. And I'm telling you it's going to happen in ours if we just remain faithful and keep a good attitude and be positive about where we are just trust him so we see this root two two principle happen again right and by the time we get to verse 7, we'll see that other people start to notice Ruth. They start to notice her obedience and her willingness. And um, it's here is, is we see the servant and He's talking about Ruth and he says, will you, she, she asked, will you let me gather falling grain among the bundles behind the harvesters? She came and has remained from early morning until now, except that she rested a little in the shelter. So here is Boaz. He's like, who is this girl? And the servant of Boaz is saying, look at Ruth. This woman has worked so hard all day. She only took one break and she's been pressing and she's doing this for her mother-in-law. She asked to come here and work and so she's working from sun up and sundown she's only taking one break she's exemplifying hard work and sacrifice and I was thinking even earlier this morning how much that's needed in our generation that we would be people that when things get hard we don't quit we don't try to go to the next thing and jump into the next job or the next church or the next ministry assignment or the next whatever that seems easier because it's hard that maybe the Lord isn't just calling me there but sometimes it's hard and it's just part of the process. It's part of us growing and going deeper into what he wants us to do and the blessings on the other side. But we do need to learn the art of faithfulness. I heard my husband talking recently to a young man and he was telling him, you know what? 
sometimes in life we have to go through hardship and just explaining the process of hardship and he remembered this moment where as a child his father was sitting down with him and he didn't like to read as a little boy and it was just hard for him he wanted to just leave all that reading material and go play and go do something else and his father said no you're gonna sit here and you're gonna read through this whole paper until you get done or all of your homework until you get done you can't just skip to skip out of this because it's difficult you can do it and I'm going to sit here with you until you do it and because of those moments those God father or son moments he progressed and he kept going and his father had to keep doing that to teach him to not just take it the easy way out and you know sometimes when we don't have that as a child it's hard for us other times we find a way to get through it but God, our Father, does the same thing. He doesn't always just give us what we want and what's easy and the easy way out. Sometimes he allows us to go through these difficult seasons to put character in us and to show us that we can do more than what we may feel like we can do. So I want to encourage you today to keep going, even if you feel like you can't do it and it's getting too hard. So out of all of this, she begins to be favored and Boaz, the leader of that whole field, notices her and he reveals that it's Ruth's love and commitment for Naomi that touches his heart as the leader. Sometimes when we're just faithful and being consistent where God has us and doing the best with what we have, God will put a leader in our life that will take note of it and then favor and promotion will come out of that. As we just not doing it necessarily to get a title or to get some type of notoriety from people, it's just the byproduct of our faithfulness where God has us. Do you, as Ruth was just doing good for her mother-in-law, it came back to her. And as we do good for others, it will come back to us in ways that are unexpected. It will come back to us because God loves us and he's faithful to reward those that diligently seek him. And so we're completely in God's hands. You know, maybe you are in a similar situation where you're you're stuck between a rock and a hard plate. Maybe you don't have a job right now. Maybe you're in a hard financial situation. Maybe you're having family problems and you're just at each other's throat in your marriage or your children are acting up and getting in trouble and it's just taking you away from the home and constantly back in that school having to have meetings with teachers. Maybe your kids that you prayed for and brought up in church just aren't going to church anymore and they have turned their back on the Lord or maybe they're in a prodigal season of their life. Maybe you just got bad health news or you're struggling through a health situation and trying to get the answers that no one seems to have. Maybe you're stressed out because of debt that you can't seem to shake and every time it seems like you move forward then you're going three steps backwards. Maybe you have school loans and that seemed like it was a blessing to go to school and now it's like man how do I pay off all these loans and unexpected financial situations keep coming up. Maybe you have roommate issues as a college student or even as an adult and you just can't seem to get along and your roommate is rude and disrespectful and not honoring of your space. Maybe your husband just doesn't seem to be hearing you or you're being misunderstood by others in your family. You're being judged. People just don't get you and you feel all alone. Maybe you have a new job which started out as a blessing but now you're trying to go through this huge learning curve and you're like, God, I just need your help. I almost want to quit even though I know I should be grateful. Maybe you're interviewing and you just keep looking for this job and you keep getting denied and you don't know why. You're feeling rejected like everyone else has the job of their dream, your dreams but you can't seem to get the job that you want. You know, God brings us to these places, allows these things to happen. God's not just looking for bad things that happen in our life, but sometimes these are the gateways to progression and success. They are the bridges that bring us to the next place that God has for us. And in them are sandwiched lessons that are eternal, lessons that are part of our calling, lessons that will help us to reach out to other people in a way that we can really identify with what they're going through. Do you know that in the middle of this press and this challenge, Ruth was about to meet one of the greatest blessings of her life. And God set her up where Boaz 
pretty much said, look, I want to give you a cafeteria meal plan. And she was elevated and she was invited to eat with the other women that were in the field gleaning the harvest. And she would eat as if she was a Jew, even though she was a foreigner and an outsider. You know, she had leftovers. He...